Hello, we're making these because it's Easter. Easterness cupcakes, brilliant. First you've got to do is make a basic chocolate Victoria sponge. So um, the recipe will be up on Facebook, just check it out. You need soft butter. So soft, if it comes straight out the fridge, you're never gonna be able to cream it. So pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds or 15 seconds just to soften it up. If you're using margarine, it'll go really quickly. Weigh the butter and the sugar into a bowl. Use the back of a wooden spoon um, just to, to cream it. This is called creaming. Creaming is when you coat all the grains of sugar with the fat and it traps a little bit of air, which gives it an extra, oh, you can do this in the mixer if you want. But in this heat, because it's really hot at the moment, um, you want to get the mixture so that when you get a dollop of it, tap it on the side of the bowl, come straight off. At that point, it's ready. If it sticks to the spoon, you've got to keep going. Once you've got to that point, stop. Back on the scales, add in your eggs. I'm only doing a third of the mixture because I've already made two batches of this and I really, if I eat 36 um, chocolate Easter nest cakes, I will be the size of a house. So you're gonna do three eggs, Crack them into a small bowl, just to get rid of any eggshell. And then give them a quick, quick whisk up with a fork. Tip those in. Now, a lot of recipes say, mix in the egg and then add the flour a little bit at a time. Don't go there. Tip all the eggs in and the flour at the same time. This will get you, will just get rid of any stress. It will stop it curdling and you'll just be a much happier person. If you've got particularly lumpy flour, sieve it. I don't, this is a brand new bag and I'm gonna cheat. And the way I'm gonna cheat is hold it above the bowl and just tap it on my hand, which will get an extra bit of air in there. So, but when you come to adding in the cocoa powder, always sieve it. Cocoa powder is really not friendly and it's very lumpy. And whether you're making cakes or icing, just always, always sieve your cocoa powder. Otherwise you'll get a mouthful of cocoa powder when you bite into a cake, which isn't very pleasant. Mix that in. Scrape the mixture off your wooden spoon and then use a metal spoon to fold all that in together. The reason you use a metal spoon is you spent ages, especially if you've got butter, creaming your butter and your sugar and you've added in lots of lovely little pockets of air. When you come to mixing your flour and your eggs, you want to do it gently so as not to beat out any of that precious air that you've added in. So the surface area of the edge of a metal spoon is a lot less than the surface area of a wooden spoon. And every time you put your spoon into that mixture, you're gonna end up adding in or popping some of those lovely little air bubbles. Um, now at this point, you can turn this into chocolate orange by and your chocolate. At which point my son's just walked in the kitchen. Max, throw me an orange, please. Quick, quick, throw me an orange. Yay. Thank you, Pacey. Children are useful at times. So orange, now the zest of an orange is the very, very outside part. This is the skin and the zest. It contains all the oil and all the flavor of the orange. Right underneath, you've got a much paler color, which is the pith, and it's bitter and horrible. You really don't want that in any of your food. So just use a fine grater and just scrape over the top and then tap that in, mix it round very gently and then pop it into cupcake cases, into the oven for about 20 minutes um, depending on the temperature of your oven. Now I'm not going to keep you here for 20 minutes while I do that so you just imagine this is my blue, blue peter bit that's gone into the oven and 20 minutes later Da, da, da. They're back out again, looking gorgeous. Now, because I've got an arga and my um, 
roasting oven is really quite hot. I get these little bit like um, mountains. They are going to be a pain to try and um, make into um, Easter nests. So I'm just going to use a sharp knife and just go around, cut the lids off, and then eat the lids. That's what you do, and that's why I quite like having an Argus, if I get to eat the lids. Now, the only issue at this point is that you then get into the realms of crumb stress, and crumb stress is when you've leveled off the top of your cake, you've released the crumb. When you then go to ice it, you need to be very careful because if you move the knife around, the crumb will get mixed up into your icing and completely wreck your icing. Doesn't matter with these because we're gonna make a buttercream up to go on and then we're going to make um, the nests. So to get the nests going, I've got some dark chocolate chips and um, a tablespoon of golden syrup. If you haven't got golden syrup, use honey. If you haven't got dark chocolate chips, use any kind of dark chocolate, break it up into wee bits and pop it in. And then that needs to go on a pan, hot water, just until it melts. So while that's going on, let's make the buttercream. So again, soft butter or margarine. You can actually get away with using margarine with chocolate buttercream because you get the flavour of the chocolate rather than the butter. Um, even so, if you're using butter, make sure it's soft. Icing sugar. Sieve your icing sugar. It's just not worth the stress of finding lumps at the end, even with these cakes, because you, although you're not going to really see the, um, the buttercream, but still, just sieve it. Just get into the habit of always sieving your icing sugar, even if it's a new packet. Sieve your icing sugar, sieve your cocoa because we don't really want any stress in there. Do we, Pete? We don't want stress in my glamorous assistant. We do not like stress. He is he's standing there just thinking, oh, when can I have a cup of tea and eat some of these cakes? This is just torture. And any minute now, although I'm gonna have um, a bunch of teenagers coming down. Okay, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. They're, they're, they're students, they're nocturnal. I swear they're like vampires. And a tablespoon of cocoa powder and again see if you cocoa powder cocoa powder is horrible it's just always always lumpy it just it's just really just friendly just like it's clumping together and then we're going to do is chop the orange in half and just squeeze in a little bit not much you only want about half a tablespoon of liquid in there now, buttercream is a bit of a pain. You mix it for ages and you think, oh, I'm going to have to put loads and loads of liquid in there to bring it together. And then suddenly it just goes, it'll just come together really, really quickly. Believe me, it will. Keep going, keep persevering, keep mixing. And then just as you think, this is a complete nightmare, it's never going to happen, as if by magic, it comes back and fills you. Like you see, it is coming together. The danger with buttercream is that you put too much liquid in there too soon and you end up with a really gloopy mixture. If that happens, then fine, just add in a little bit more liquid. Now you see that's kind of come together in a ball. That just needs a little bit more liquid in there. Just not much, it needs to be spreadable. But if you do put too much liquid in, just keep adding, add some more icing sugar and some more um, cocoa powder just to bring it back so it's a uh, spreadable rather than gloopy. So pop that to one side, make sure your cakes are cool and that your chocolate, ah oh, hello here's my Labrador, this is Gus. He's come as my glamorous assistant to help, haven't you Gus? Obviously, if this is a professional kitchen, dogs aren't allowed in it. But usually, I have him sitting on my feet. He's just gone to he's just He's just plonked himself down on my feet. So, chocolate's melted. And into here, to make the nest. Now, you can use any cereal. Shredded wheat works brilliantly. However, nobody in my family eats shredded wheat. So, it's just a complete waste. I end up using a couple of biscuits of shredded wheat and throwing the rest away. So I'm using shreddies. 
can use cornflakes, you can use rice krispies, you could use muesli, you could use chopped up nuts, anything to get some texture to make it look a bit like a nest. So just get creative. And then crumble in sufficient, mix it up. Just make sure it's all coated. You can always add more of the cereal to it, but you want to make sure it's, it's coated and it's not too gloopy. There we go. And then to assemble, this is the fun bit. So a round bladed knife or a little palette knife, doesn't really matter. About a heat teaspoon of buttercream on the top. Now this is literally, you just want sufficient on it. It doesn't need to be neat. You just want to dollop on here so that the nest has got something to stick to. And then pile on your chocolate, your chocolate nest, which will stick to the buttercream a little bit more. And then indent in the middle. And pop on. Some mini eggs. If you haven't got mini eggs, I find these notoriously difficult to get a hold of this year. You could use Smarties, you could um, make them out of sugar paste or marzipan and just model them. You could use M&Ms. Um, get creative. Use Skittles, anything. Um, just to make them look like chocolate Easter cake. There you go.